Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to a reset live lectures. Dear friends, today in computer science we will be talking about the concept of software project management. To discuss this topic we have with us our subjects expert Mr. Anil Kumar Mishra. Mr. Mishra is associate professor in department of computer science in a prominent university in the NCR of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you ma'am. So today the topic for our discussion would be the software project management which is very interesting and the uh, important topic. So the topic, subtopics for the discussion would be project planning, the software cost estimation and we will discuss the various important models for the cost estimation, the size, how the software size is measured and how the estimation is done empirically and uh, what are the heuristic models for that and the most important constructive cost construction models. Then how the staffing levels are estimated and how the scheduling is compressed and scheduling is costed and then we will conclude the session. So the most of the software projects have failed not because of the technical incompetency, not because of the uh, lack of resources whether it is resource of software and the hardware but it has failed due to the faulty project management practices for uh, especially in the case of large project in the case of a small project and the middle projects the management practices may not be that much important although that is important but uh, the impact on the uh, large size project where where 1000 crore projects 1500 crore crore project even more than 500 crore projects the software mon management practices are very very important be because the impact is very high. Then though, so it is very important to learn the software management project management activities and the technique for the project manager. And before starting I would like to say that for any project whether it is a small project and middle project and the large project the software project manager is completely responsible for completion of the project. If the project fails then the project manager is responsible for that. If the pro uh, project succeeds then the project manager is responsible for that. <coughs> so the uh, goal of the software project management is to enable a group of engineers to work efficiently toward the successful completion of a software project because uh, after the acquirement of the project when the project is acquired the project manager is given free hand 100 percent free hand to manage even to create the team to manage the team and to complete the task independently for the final uh, before the delivery so a project manager is 100 percent responsible for completion successfully completion of the projects and successfully completion means it should be done within the budget and within the time and because the if it is delayed it has an impact on the cost and if it is over budgeted it, ha it has an impact on the time. So the basic responsibility of the project managers which are important the project manager writes the project proposal the first step of the project management technique then project manager estimates the cost then project manager schedule all the resources whether it is technical resources human resources and other types of resources then the selection of project staffing is done by the project manager means recruitment or selection of the staff then the staffs are put on the different activities and like that then project monitoring and control that is very very important. Okay. The project monitoring and the control starts from the first day of the project <coughs> activities starts. So monitoring and control if the monitoring and the control is efficient and the good then the project progress would be very very efficient and project would be go in the very very right direction towards the successful completion. So project monitoring means it is observed the project progress is observed on many many important issues technical issues and the non-technical issues and accordingly the control is done 
whenever needed a control is done by the project manager it is basically project manager is not a single human being he is not a single person he has a full team with him that is called the project management team so basically a project manager has his technical team business team non technical team and other uh, hr team with him and he or she controls the project management activities through monitoring proper monitoring and through his all these things are seen by the project spm teams only and project manager takes the help of spm tools there are so many tools available in the market and those tools are efficiently used by the project manager to successfully complete the project then the configuration management is another important event of the project management activities and then the risk management which is independent activities because if if, if the project is completely or successfully completed even then the risk if it has not been recognized at the particular amount of time or the initial amount of time it would have an impact earlier it has been done in the case of y2k problem and so many major problems has failed after successfully uh, execution of so many years the project has failed so the risk management tracking identification of the risk tracking of the risk mitigation of the risk and the avoidance of the risk is done by the project manager only and then the managerial report writing and the presentation also they are the very very inevitable part of the project management <coughs> so the project management activities include the project planning and broadly there are many sub activities but it can be broadly will go into two categories one is project planning and other is project monitoring and the control <coughs> but but once the project is found to be feasible feasible study is a must before the project planning progresses because a project whether the project is feasible or not after acquirement of the project by a software project company the feasibility study is done from the various corner it should be technically feasible it should be economically feasible it should be socially feasible it should be politically feasible and when a project passes through all the feasibility study parameters then the project planning activity is taken up so the feasibility study is must and according to the feasibility study the rectification is immediately suggested and all the thoughts are given there itself then the project progress start no then the project planning is the first activity now there are many many sub activities under the project planning so first estimation is done estimation is a broad sense estimation includes effort estimation effort estimation means how many people would be needed for how long how many times that is called the effort estimation and cost estimation what would be the cost for overall completion of the project resource estimation what are the hardware software air condition rooms tester coder and other people they are part of the team that is called the resource estimation and the project duration how much time the team has because the software project manager either he or she is developing the project dedicated project or he or she is developing the product in the case of project management and the product management there is little bit difference of the fine tuning only and the difference of the basic concepts but more or less the activities are same but it is carried out in a different way because for the product development the budget has no restriction and the team structure is of different quality for the software project management there is a restriction of budget and the team are of different quality but apart from this basic difference the techniques are more or less same so the effort estimation cost estimation resource estimation and the duration of the project that is in advance calculated or estimated and those estimation the accuracy of those estimation have very very high impact on the overall project completion or the project development 
then project scheduling is done. Scheduling means first identification of different activities or the task would be computed because project is an integrated thing, but project would be broken into different work or different tasks or the different <coughs> small activities. Then scheduling of those activities, scheduling means from which time to which time the activity would be done that should be planned in advance. Then the according to the availability of the staff, the staffing plan is necessary in advance because there are so many schedules so many activities, so many tasks and we have the limited manpower resources. For example, we have the limited tester, limited coder or the limited requirement engineers. So the and we have so many activities to be done and there are so many projects, not a single projects because the staffs are the part of the organization. In most of the software organization, the staffs are not part of the project, they are part of the organizations. So a, the scheduling of staffing or the planning for the scheduling of staffing is done in advance. Then the risk handling. Risk handling means risk is the uncertain event which can occur during the course of execution of the project development or the product development or it can occur after the installation of the project or the product. So risk handling includes so many steps. The so first the risk should be identified, then the risk should be analyzed and according to the weightage of the risk, priority of the risk, either the risk should be mitigated, mitigated means the effect should be reduced or it should be avoided, it should be prevented, whatever action has to be taken. So the abatement of the risk procedure is done. So risk handling includes the identification, the analysis and accordingly the action, what actions has been taken. In some of the cases it would be avoided, in some of the cases it would be prevented and in some of the cases it, the effect would be mitigated. And apart from the, these, there are so many miscellaneous plans associated with a project uh, by default. For example, the quality assurance plan means every project or the product follow certain quality procedures and the quality procedures is decided by the joint aggregation of the client as well as the project activities team, project development team. So quality assurance techniques, so there, are, there should be some compliance with the quality assurance techniques or the quality prevention techniques, then the configuration management plan is noted in advance. So these all these activities are planned before the project progresses after the feasibility study is completed. Then, <coughs> then the project planning requires utmost care and the attention, commitments to unrealistic and the resource estimate result in if the planning is not proper, if something has been committed which is not realistic by the project manager by simply giving proper thought. If something has been uh, uh, committed then it may lead to irritating delays, it may lead to customers dissatisfaction, it may lead to team moral also, it may lead to adverse effect, it may lead to poor quality work and it may lead to project failure fully or partially. Project failure means even if the, in some of the cases project is delivered to the client, but it is not properly working on all the functionality, it is a partial failure or the project has been delivered to the client, but the client is facing a lot of problem, client is not satisfied as they should be. So it will have an impact on the project management teams moral and the progress like that. So uh, project planning, but rather I would say the quality of the project planning, it decides 90% of the project's success. If the planning is pro proper, because other steps are the follow up, other steps are only hard work because there is no dearth of technology, no dearth of resources, no dearth of money these days for most of the client. So if the planning is proper, so ultimately the other steps are the follow up steps and the project would be completed in the right manner, within the right time, within the right cost. So uh, uh, that is why it is recommended or project manager 
focuses or project management team focuses most of the time in project planning because they know that this is the foundation step, if this should be proper, the other steps will go in compliance with that. So, the project will be leaded in the successful way. So, even the planning, there are two types of planning, one is sliding window planning for the voluminous project, for the large project or the project with high budget because it is very difficult because project itself is intangible, software project is intangible. So, it is very difficult to know about all the resources, about all the staffs and about all the tasks and the activities in advance. So, in sliding window planning what is done? The planning is done as the project progresses. As the project activities progresses, the things become clearer and the planning is done there itself. So, initially some planning is done or the rough planning is done and as the project progresses, the next planning becomes clear or the project management team have more clarity or to, to plan effectively. So, this is called the <coughs> planning is not done in a one stretch rather planning is done in several stages. So, in for the large projects, for big projects or high budget projects, sliding window planning is preferred because it automatically uh, stops the project manager to do the big commitments and because the more information would be available. So, the planning would be near to accurate and after planning is, is complete, what is done? The planning documents, which is called the SPMP document that is created. Every company has their different format of SPMP documents, IBM follows different format, uh, TCS follow different format or the other software companies follow different format. They have their own format, they use the tool also, but finally uh, after the rigorous work. The, by the project management team, the SPMP document must be prepared, whether it is the uh, windows planning, sliding window planning or whether it is the static planning, both should be done. So, the SPMP document is created by the SPM team, then the other activities are followed up. So, the basic entities in the uh, SPMP documents, although the format can be different, but basically the entities are same. So, it should carry the introduction part. In the introduction, the objective should be clear, objective of the project should be clear, what are the major functionality in the projects, what are the performance issues, management in the technical constraint because every uh, technical uh, every company has the technological constraint as well as the managerial constraints. So, that should be immediately laid down in the SPMP documents and what would be the performance issues, be, uh, it can carry the limitation of the clients, it can carry the limitations of the software in, in the country where it would be used like that and the objective should be very, very clear ki after completion of that project, what objective the company is going to achieve and what objective the client is going to achieve and <coughs> how many functions they would include and after that the estimation. Estimation would include the historical data, historical data means what are the attributes of all the data in the similar kind of project that must be associated in the planning document itself, then what estimation technique is being used, what are the efforts available, what would be the cost and what time the project management team has to successfully deliver the project. Then the project resource plan document is created and uh, all the resources pertaining to that particular project must be laid down. For example, what are the human resources available, what are the um, hardware available, sensors available, what are the software tools, utilities available for that particular project and what special resources the project may require and the project would be allotted during the project creation time or project completion time. And then the uh, schedules in the form of work breakdown structure, it must be created. It is a part of 
planning team only, ki how many works are there? The major work would be fragmented into different work, which would be again fragmented into different work, uh, so that the team can take up every work as a small entity and that should be completed. So work breakdown structure means big work must be broken into different smaller work and the structure should be proper. Then the different tasks should be created and the task network diagram that is a part of the SPMP document. Then the Gantt chart, Gantt chart means scheduling time from which date to which date, which activities or which task or which work has to be carried out. That must be represented in the form of Gantt chart, means it is a part of planning only. Then, then planning would be validated at the time of project progress. Then part chart and CPM chart should be represented in the planning document always. Then the risk management plan, risk management from the first day itself after the feasibility study, the risk management team, mostly most of the big companies or the big project, software project, they deal risk differently because risk is a separate entities and different types of approach are needed to track the risks. So there are many companies which are entirely based on the risk analysis and the risk identification. So you can, uh, some project manager delegate that portion to the other company or to the other team if the company is of big size. Then the, in the risk management planning document which is part of SPMP document, the risk analysis, risk identification should be done uh, and then uh, uh, the high level risk, low level risk and the middle level risk should be tracked and the proper analysis should be done and then the estimation must be done, estimation in the form of impact if this particular risk will uh, reside, uh, then what would be the impact? If the impact is very high, then that risk must be um, avoided or the risk must be, uh, the um, uh, damage must be mitigated or the reduced. So everything must be laid down in the SPMP document. Then the project tracking and the control plan. Project tracking means the proper monitoring on the daily basis, weekly basis or the monthly basis and uh, proper analysis of all the tasks or the activities for all the phases should be done by the SPM team and the controlling. If some action is needed, it should be done immediately because later on, because every effect has a damage on the next phase. So to prevent from that damage, immediately the control activity should be done. So monitoring and control, this is the foregoing process uh, with every activities. It can be done on in some of the, it, it also depends upon the type of the projects because there are some system project, there are some utility project, there are some application project and there are some mixed projects. So it depends. Apart from that, the miscellaneous plan which will include the quality assurance ki that particular project is assuring this quality level. There are so many quality level, compatibility maturity model, Six Sigma, <coughs> PSP, TSP and other quality assurance models are existing in the software community. So that should be in the compliance. So software cost estimation, cost estimation it will determine the size of the project or the product <coughs> and size is a vague thing. Size means size can be estimated only in terms of effort or in terms of time duration. So size of the products not in terms of uh, uh, number of lines or not in terms of uh, number of functions or the number of uh, features because the size of the project will directly define the effort needed, effort input and it will directly define or determine the project duration and the overall cost of the project. So this is the uh, schematic diagram, uh, so the whole project management activities can be laid down in the form of this schematic diagram, so size estimation, size estimation can be put in two way, the effort estimation and the duration estimation. So if the effort is high, 
then the duration can be low. If the duration is high, then the effect can be low. It is not the mathematical relationship, but there is some correlation, not algebraic relationship, but of course, if you want to complete the project within the uh, less duration, then most uh, um, effort should be increased. If you want to delay the project or if you want to put the duration high, then the effort should be low. And then accordingly, the staff estimation is done. It is a it it is depending upon the effort estimation and the duration estimation and then the scheduling is done and scheduling is done and the cost estimation is purely the byproduct of effort estimation. Effort estimation means how many people are working for how many days. The unit of the effort is person month. Suppose 100 people are working for one month then the effort would be 100 person month. Uh, it is not the case ki one people is working for 100 days, it means that would be equivalent to 100 person month. It is not mathematical relationship, but if 100 person month means 100 person should work for one month. Then <coughs> there are many approaches for uh, cost estimation. The cost estimation is a very tedious work and lot of research is going on in this area to fine tune the cost estimation because this is the uh, uh, foundation because software is intangible and most of the parts are intangible. So, the cost estimates accuracy of the cost estimation is very tedious or very tough work even the projects are not repeatable every project is a new project. So, the effort estimation uh, cost estimation is a very very difficult task, but you cannot no project manager or project management team can ignore this cost estimation because until unless the cost is not decided how can the project progress and how the client would know ki how much money they have to give after the successful delivery of the projects and how the project manager would know ki what amount they have how many time amount means in terms of effort and time how many resources they can use, how many hardware they can procure for this particular projects because it depends upon uh, so many attributes. The client size is important, client's budget is also important, client's expectation is also important and the company size is also important, the development size is also important, there are so many things and the even the quality assurance which are in compliant, compliant uh, with the particular projects which is desire of the client that is also important. So, there are many many approaches because there are different types of projects, smaller projects, middle projects, big projects, mega big projects. So, accordingly there are different approaches for the cost estimation and different models are available for the cost estimation. They are not the mathematical model, but the models have been created by looking at the historical data of different projects in the same area and different projects have been studied, the uh, attributes have been calculated, then the correlation between the among the attributes had been <coughs> found out, then the mathematical model has been created. So, this is purely these models are based on the uh, statistics study of various projects in the same area. So, we have the empirical model, heuristic model and the analytical model. These three types of model are very popular in the software community. So, in the empirical model what an educated guess based on past experience is done. So, there are two sub techniques expert judgment techniques and the Delphi cost estimation technique. In the expert judgment technique what is done? Suppose, there is a project in the banking sector or there is a project in the insurance sector then the expert in that particular area or project is contacted. Suppose, a person has worked 20 years in the software development field of the banking project. Then of course, that, that person is having very, very experience. He or she has seen different types of situations in the banking projects. So, uh, that person is contacted because that person is the educated person in that particular area and their advice is respected and their advice is honored and based on the feedback of that particular expert, the cost is estimated. So, this is called the expert judgment technique and, uh, but this 
टेक्निक हैज ए लकूना दिस टेक्निक हैज ए लकूना बिकॉज दिस इन द एक्सपर्ट जजमेंट टेक्निक दैट इज बायस्ड द फीडबैक इज बायस्ड continue with the cost estimation techniques so in the previous session we have discussed about the empirical techniques which is consist of uh, expert judgment techniques and the delphi cost estimation in the expert ju judgment techniques we have seen that the expert in that particular domain is contacted and their feedback is given the utmost important but this technique has a lacuna that the expert becomes biased most of the time or expert feel pressure from the com software uh, company to give some particular types of feedback so for the uh, um, big projects the expert judgment technique is not uh, really uh, useful but it is useful for the smaller projects or the sometimes the middle level of projects uh, so the delphi cost estimation technique is little bit improvement of upon the uh, expert judgment technique in the delphi cost estimation technique uh, rather than one expert many experts are contacted and uh, there is a coordinator who contacts all the experts and experts are not allowed to meet even they don't know each other so the various experts in that particular domain is contacted by the coordinator their views are taken up and then coordinator assimilates all the idea and they put in the form of document the, then the of course the uh, uh, document that judgment is free from the biasing was the major drawbacks in the case of expert judgment technique this is, and this is called the empirical technique for the cost estimation and this is preferred still preferred and this is one way for the smaller project and the middle level of projects then we have another very very important uh, technique that is called the heuristic technique and in the heuristic technique one model and there are so many revisions of that model that is called constructive cost model or cost construction model and that is defined and uh, model is created different attributes are find parameters are find and then the cost estimation is done and we also have the analytical technique available <coughs> and in the analytical technique we derive the required results starting from certain simple assumption some assumption is done then the analysis is made so <coughs> before the uh, cost estimation is done it uh, it must be calculated ki what would be the size measurement for that particular project so size measurement can be done only in terms of line of code in terms of function point or in terms of feature point so this is the first tangible part of the software activity or the software project or the product so the line of code means it is the simple and the most widely used measurement the comments and the blanks must not be counted it is not counted then but 
the disadvantage of the line of code is the size can vary with the coding style. If one coder is writing 10 line, the another coder can write that in one line by changing his or her style. The, and in the line of code measurement, the focus is completely on the coding activity. Although the coding is only a small part of the software project development, only 10 percent time is given on the coding quality or the coding activities uh, duration. So, generally uh, coder puts a lot of time to correct the coding. So, then there is a, a clear damage on the other activities. Though correlates poorly with the quality and the efficiency of the codes. High <coughs> for high level programming languages, the code reuse these things are very, very, very important. So, in the line of code measurements, this must be taken care and this is not feasible most of the time. So, the uh, other advantage is it measures the lexical complexity only or the textual complexity only. So, the feature measurement or the function measurement is not done properly in the case of LOC and uh, it is very, very difficult to find out the number of line of code by referring to the problem description. description. What is desired by the software community that this is the problem in the banking area, this is the problem in the insurance area, there are so many functions available which has to be developed by the software developer team. So, simply from the function, the number of line of code should be estimated which is very difficult for any uh, do, uh, domain knowledge expert or the coder to say until unless they do not code the mapping would be improper. This is the most big disadvantage with the line of code. So, the planning, planning will not be proper. So, uh, mostly in most of the big projects in the application project the function, function point measurement is preferred. Function point measurement means uh, this overcomes the shortcoming of the line of code measurement and uh, the um, first uh, important achievement in this particular function point measurement is that simply from the problem description the uh, functions are derived and the measurement is done in terms of number of functions rather than number of lines of code. So, number of functions can be easily known and the types of the function can also be derived. So, now the they have the quantity that these many functions has to be uh, developed or these are the number of types of the functions, varieties of the functions. So, simply the cost estimation is um, import, uh, accurate on the client and the developer, they both agreed upon the function point measurement. So, this was proposed by the all breached and in the application development software, this is mostly used these days and there is a clear weightage for different types of function. For input, it can be 4, for output, it can be 4, for inquiries, it can be 10, for <coughs> Uh, files it can be 10 because the weight are different for simple project, for middle level projects and the for the high complexity projects. So, the weighted measure for all types of functions whether they are the input functions, output function, inquiries function and the interface functions that can be calculated and the count of number of output files the number of inquiries files, the number of uh, interface files and the number of data files would be tracked. It is very easy to track those. Then the function point value is calculated by multiplying the unadjusted function point and the technical function complexity. This is very important. Though the te TCF technical complexity factor is computed, UAF unadjustment <coughs> function value is calculated, then finally the function point value is computed and for every project the function point value can be known by the customer as well as the developer. But again in the case of function point measurement, the quality of the function has not been taken care of which is very, very important in the case of utility development as well as in the case of system program development or system software development. Because in the case of system software development, the software is directly interactive with the hardware or the machine 
in the case of utilitarian development because the development of the utility is done only to enhance the performance of the uh, application software as well as the uh, uh, system software. So, the object objective is entirely different. So, there the number of functions are not important rather the quality of the function in terms of time complexity or the space complexity is very very important. So, which is a lacking. So, in the case of uh, system software development and the utilities development in the function point matrix is will never give the correct estimation. So, there the feature point matrix is introduced or they are taken care of. So, these are the three base measurement LOC, function point and the feature point. So, of course, the function point is language independent size is simply derived from the problem descriptions and then the empirical size estimation techniques. We have already talked about the expert judgment techniques. The problem with the expert judgment is it suffers from the individual bias. The solution is Delphi estimation technique and it overcomes the problem faced in the case of expert judgment techniques. The coordinator solves the problem of the biasing. Then in the heuristic estimation technique which is the practical model for most of the application projects or big projects because those earlier techniques expert judgment and the Delphi and the analytical technique they are applied on the middle sized on the low level of projects. But the heuristic estimation technique it is applied on the big projects and application project particularly or big system software projects. So, the heuristic estimation technique can be applied on the single variable model or the multivariable model. Variable means all those parameters which are directly or indirectly affecting the cost of the projects. So, for every project there are many many types of parameters which needs to be computed. So, first the identification of the parameters are important and the most important parameters are the value of those are must be tracked and it depends upon the type of the projects also because there are some organic project, semi detached project and the uh, utility projects. So, accordingly the uh, number of attributes and the value of attributes are going to be different. For the multivariable project the parameters must be estimated they should be simplified and put in the form of formula and in the heuristic model the <coughs> constructive cost model has been proposed by Bohem. So, these days we have the advanced uh, Kokomo models available and a lot of research is taking place in this area to fine tune the parameters and to simplify the models. So, most advanced models are coming up day by day, but basically to apply the Kokomo model the software has been divided in three parts the organic means it is for the application software, semi detached it is means for utilities and the embedded it is for the system software. So, basically either a software is a application software or it is a combination of application plus utilities or it is a combination of application plus utilities plus systems. So, it cannot be the case that the software is completely organic, it is completely semi detached or it is completely embedded if it is a big project. So, but the percentage if a project can consist of 80 percent organic part, uh, 10 percent semi detached and the 10 percent embedded. So, accordingly the parameters will change. So, for organic part the relatively small groups are needed and uh, working to develop well understood applications because the functions are known, functions are divided. Now, the team has to work upon the functionalities. So, uh, the task has been computed, the work breakdown structure has been created for semi detached the <coughs> project team consists of mixture of experience and the inexperienced staff. So, some uh, of the staffs are leading and some of the, of the staffs are supporting as well as they are learning. And for the embedded of course, 
the embedded software or the system software has to be directly interfere with the hardware. So, the team should be such that they should properly know the functionality of the computer. Otherwise, the embedded software cannot be carried out in a proper way. For size estimation, which uh, unit is kilo line of code, KLOC and the project duration is, the unit of the project duration is month and effort of programmer is put in the form of person month. So, we have different types of uh, cost construction model available. We have basic Kokomo models, intermediate Kokomo models and the complete Kokomo model. The formula for the effort estimation is A1, KLOC, A2 and time to develop the project is B1, effort B2. So, KLOC is the estimated kilo line of source code means 10,000 line of 10,000 line of code would be the size of this particular project. This is the estimated size. A1, A2, B1, B2 are the constant for different categories of software product means for organic project the A1 value of A1 and A2 would be different than that for the semi test and than that for the emitted projects. So, similarly the value of B1 and B2 would be different for different types of projects. For organic the value is different, for semi test the value is different. And the development effort estimation for organic project is effort equal to 2.4, this is the value of A1, KLOC 1.05, this is the value of B1. And the uh, uh, unit of effort is person month for semi test, the unit of effort is person month and the values for A1 and B2 are different. For embedded, the unit of effort is person month and the value of A1 and A2 are different. These values has been found out by referring to many, many projects in the same categories. So, many organic projects has been uh, taken up, their attributes value have been studied by different researchers, then this value has been computed. And so, the effort estimation means for organic product, this is the, if the kilo line of code, if size of the project is this much, then this effort is needed, this person month is needed. For semi detached, this effort is needed. For embedded project, this particular effort is needed. But effort itself is not complete. Effort without time to complete that project is half. And if a team talks that this much effort is needed for this much duration, then it completes the cost estimation. So, effort is only half estimation. Then the time to develop the project is computed for organic project in the Kokomo model. The time to develop is in terms of months. The value of A1 is 2.5, then effort already known. It's So, the effort and the time to develop the project is proportional. If effort is high, of course, the time to develop the project would be low. If the effort is low, then the time to develop the project would be high. Not mathematical relationship, but analytical relationship. For semi detached, the time to develop the project is 2.5, the value of A1, effort 0.35 months. For embedded, the time to develop the project is 2.5, effort 0.32 months. So, now this Kokoko model, this basic Kokoko model is giving the value of effort as well as the value of time to develop the project. So, here the basic Kokomo model has been depicted through the graph in y axis, we have the effort and the x axis, we have the size of the project. In terms of kilo line of code, it can be done in terms of function point also. So, uh, it is clearly seen that effort is super linear in problem size or super linear means as the size progresses, the effort increases more than linear way. So, of course, 
if the size of the project is increases then the complexity of the project will increase and if the complexity of the project is increased then the effort effort must be increased because the the analogy of the project would be very very difficult then this uh, only person month should, must be increased so as the size increases the complexity of the project technical complexity or the other complexity of the project uh, uh, become heavier and so the effort must be increased so similarly uh, uh, we have another graph which shows about the time to develop a projects and size of the projects and this development time is some sublinear function of product size or the project size means as the size of the project increases the time to develop that product is below linear it is less than 1 the uh, coordinate value is less than 1 than that of the time so of course if the size increases then the duration of the project completions become sublinear the meaning is that if uh, suppose 10000 kilo line of code uh, is the size of the software and that is being completed that should be completed in 10 months then if you are adding 5000 line of code then of course it will not take another 5 months it will take little bit lesser time because the team is ready and team is doing the same work they are developing the same functionalities so they have become expert they are aware with their uh, as the pro project progresses in the later phases the team is more efficient to do the complete the same activities so later on in the later stages the time taken is less so that's why it is sublinear as with the size <coughs> so these are all about the basic kokomo model uh, for development time is roughly the same for all the three categories of the product so for example a 60 kilo line of code program can be developed in approximately 18 months regardless of whether it is of organic semi detached or the embedded type there is more specific of for parallel activities for systems and the application program than utilities program for example the size of an organic software product has been estimated to be 32,000 line of code source code. So, effort can be estimated through the basic Kokomo model for 2.5, 32 kilo line of code. So, 32,000 32, means 32 kilo line of code, 1.05. So, effort is 91 percent month. So, nominal development time would be 14 months. Nominal development time, nominal means time to develop the project in a linear way that is called the nominal development time means at least 14 months are needed it can be done before that also but nominal development means it in any case it will it should not go beyond 14 months so the project can be completed through this particular effort if the 91 percent month has been put on the roll then within 40 months the project would be completed and sometimes uh, practically what is done ki 91 instead of 91 percent month they put less percent months so accordingly they will have to uh, adjust the time to complete the project so time to develop the project is different than that of the nominal development time nominal development time is for the estimation it is completely for the estimation So, basic Kokomo model assumes effort and the development time depend on project size alone. This is very very important. In the basic Kokomo model, the effort and the development time depend on the project size or the product size alone. Because in all the formula, you can refer only kilo line of code has been taken care of. Other issues which are very very important issues because the size. Uh, size is only one issue, on, only tangible part, only touchable part. But apart from size, there are many, many parameters which must be taken care of. For example, reliability requirements. Reliability means whether the software will behave same in different circumstances or not. That is called the reliability requirements. So, how many case tools are available? So, the team 
may have automatic case tools available, some team may not have awesome automatic case tools available, some of the projects, for some of the projects the case tools are not available in the market, so first they will build the case tools and there are many modern facilities which are available or not that must be computed, that is another important parameter apart from the size and how the size of data, here we have talked about the size of the project source, source code but the size of data is entirely different. For example, in the telecom projects, uh, the data is another problem. In the telecom projects, the size of the software is different and the sort of size of the data is different. For if you take example of any company for Airtel, immediately the thousand uh, data are coming and in the next moment the data incoming is changed. Either it will be less or it will be too high. So, the size of data, another important parameter which has not been taken care of in the case of basic Kokomo model. So, we have the another Kokomo model where the number of parameters are increased. For example, in the, the concept is same, but uh, in the basic Kokomo model, we have considered only four parameters A1, A2 and the B1, B2 and we have ignored all the parameters. So, the cost estimation, we have the nominal cost estimation in terms of effort, or in terms of time for the development of the projects. But to have the more accuracy, we need to apply the intermediate Kokomo model means all the parameters, it, because the parameters computation also depends upon the time of the type of the projects. So, they must be estimated, uh, computed properly, estimated properly. So, all the, there are uh, uh, almost 15 parameters which has been tracked out through the uh, advanced Kokomo model and the intermediate Kokomo model. So, they must be computed for different projects. <coughs> so, if, if modern programming practices are used, so an initial est estimates are scaled downward. If there are stringent reliability requirements on the product, initial estimate is scaled upwards. So, rate different parameters on a scale of 1 to 3 depending on these ratings multiply cost driver values with the estimate obtained using the basic Kokomo then cost driver classes will belong to product will belong to computer being used will belong to personal means experience of the user or experience of the uh, developer and the other development parameter attributes. All these are the multiplier or the cost drivers means inherent complexity of the product reliability requirements if needed and the execution time the client wants the uh, storage requirements for that particular project because in the telecom projects I have mentioned the storage requirement is too high uh, and uh, the experience of the user that has another impact. So, that is another parameters and the development environments, how many tools, automatic tools are being used by the clients or as well as by the developers. So, accordingly the basic Kokomo model should be modified, all those parameters are applied and the fine tuning of the effort estimation and the cost estimation must be done before final cost estimation and the effort estimation. So, Similarly, for these types of projects, we have another complete Kokomo model because these days different paradigms are created. So, in these paradigms, for example, database management system, database is one part and the management system is one part. So, the cost estimation for database and the management would be different. So, there the cost drivers and the product drivers are entirely different. So, the in the complete Kokomo model, it is the amalgamation of basic Kokomo model plus intermediate Kokomo model because the uh, cost of the data based development would be different and the cost of the application development would be different. So, in the, so we have already discussed about the basic management practices software uh, in terms of project planning, monitoring, control and the cost estimation. So, in the cost estimation all the way most of the software companies prefer the Kokomo model 
in terms of basic cocoa model, intermediate cocoa model and the complete cocoa model. It depends upon the size of the project and the type of the project, whether it is organic, semi-detached or other types of projects. So, a lot of research is going on this in this particular area and I hope this has cleared the topic. Dear friends, due to paucity of time, we have to stop our lecture here. On that note, we would like to thank Mr. Mishra for coming to our show and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, for watching our lecture. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.